Um, but, but thinking about how we can mediate now his genius and also thinking about the ways in which through language, through images, through performativity, through picking so many different mediums, that he was really fighting for a subjectivity that was denied to him at every turn. Um, and I, I think it's just such an interesting thing to think about it as a negotiation, to think about it as like the choreography around being a black genius and being able to love yourself, to be able to um, have this kind of value on your own thought. Um, because I also think so much about Basquiat, I mean, just right now, like I'm an internet kid. Like what it would be like for him to be an internet kid with us and think about how like I have so many people who I can build community with and, and, and will like from around the world applaud the things that I do and thinking about how, not necessarily lonely because I think that that's also a, a stereotype that's posited on his legacy, but what his global like, interconnectivity could look like in a cyberspace is something that I always think about because for me, the cyberspace is a space of love, but also, also a space of surveillance is also like deeply kind of coded. The question of like what a black artist is, a, is allowed to say about themselves in relation to their identity because as much as it is about love in a lot of contexts, when I see his work, there's also a lot of things that are really dark and a lot of uh, things that um, express, express the sort of ambivalent state that someone who's a, a product and a part of the diaspora is dealing with. And so for me, I feel like he established a precedent that is really, I guess was ahead of its time in the sense that he was dealing with the negativity of the black experience, the complicated nature, the mannequin sort of like structures. Like when I saw it, I thought of like Frantz Fanon and a lot of sort of like black psycho psychoanalysis and sort of like the struggles um, that we all sort of deal with in a lot of ways, but expressing that and playing that out in relation to himself and you know, a lot of the symbols that he's like, you know, was sort of developing in his practice. But to me, I related to that um, in a really strong way because it didn't necessarily view his role as a black artist as a responsibility to depict a sort of like pastoral idea of what blackness should or had to be in contrast to what it was in the time that he was producing it. He was able to deal with the sort of ambivalence and nuances and subjects of like, like even just the, the formal qualities of this word to me sometimes come off as like, like, like schizophrenic in a lot of ways, really angry at a lot of times. Sometimes it's really more serene and beautiful, but I think that to me that sort of stood out as a quality of this work that I appreciated. And I think ultimately maybe that's a different way of approaching questions of self-love and honesty in those ways, but that's what I saw in his work as opposed to necessarily a sort of like idea or statement about of kind of living your life and this idea of the politics of Basquiat um, to find kind of joy and beauty and narrative and expression in the world is kind of what inspires me personally. Or again, you know, it's, it's always like this complicated act when it comes to, you know, talking about blackness, talking about art, and talking about someone who, who is dead as well, right? So I want to kind of pose the question to you. Um, if you were to attribute a kind of politics to Basquiat, if you were to attribute, um, let's say, like a philosophy of Basquiat, which I know is kind of a, a complicated task in its own right, what would you say the politics of Basquiat um, would be? Or what would you say the philosophy of Basquiat would be? What's the, um, what's the, what's the, the wisdom and the articulation of life in the world that you get from Basquiat? and that you think we can read from his work and, and really kind of take with us into Black History Month. I'm curious to know um, whether it's from like a historical perspective or not, what the sort of readings that... Because I was coming to this mostly from a question, and so I don't know if anyone else on the panel was coming at that from a different angle that was more um, like positive in terms of like what it suggested or historical, but I wanted to know what that intersection was, because I always saw his work totally not in the context of queerness, and so it's interesting to me when we ask that from I think, I mean, I, I think of, when I think of Basquiat in terms of queerness, I think of it outside of sexual identity, you know, I think of it in terms of sort of troubling the boundaries of, of, of normativity, troubling the, the sort of parameters of tradition, history, and I think, you know, when I think of Basquiat and sort of the, the dominant theme for me is this easy question, because it's the subtitle of the book, um, which is, it's about ambivalence. You know, it's really about, you know, getting, getting away from and avoiding binaries, right? It's not black or white. It's not, 
expressionism or conceptual art, but it's both and, right? And I think that what his work shows us with sort of, you know, going back to what you're saying with these you are the references, right, is that, you know, his, his creation of identity um, or his sort of creation of blackness is always changing, always evolving, right? He's looking at blackness in Memphis, Tennessee, and he's looking at blackness in Memphis, Egypt, right? So he's really sort of drawing a new kind of, a, a new trajectory, right? That is, that is non-linear, that is sort of multicultural, that is, that is um, you know, transcends the sort of idea of a linear history. Um, or the singular identity or, or, or subjectivity that's simple, right? Um, I think that the work shows us that, you know, in some ways, these things aren't always legible, right? That's one of the things that really fascinates me about the work is it's, um, and this is probably more of a revelation of my personality than anything else, is that I just love the resistance that it presents to the viewer, right? It remains inscrutable and illegible for, on so many levels, no matter what you know, right? You have to know the whole history of the world to understand the Basquiat painting, right? You have to understand car crashes that happened at the Grand Prix in 1934. You have to understand Roman history and superheroes and television, all of those things. So I think that, you know, part of his sort of idea of thinking about him as queer is this idea of a resistance, right? Of, 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 refu of a refusal, right? To sort of be normative. Um, and, and to be understood within the traditional parameters or languages that we've ascribed to him. Who live and how they die, and just this way that has gone on historically and will happen in ways consistently, whether we, you know, there's no special way to die.